TV KPM. A very warm welcome and happy Tuesday to all of you who are watching. This is Zudik TV's Road to Success SPM 2020. Now, we are continuing somewhat. This is also about literature. So for English literature today, right now, we are going to delve into... We're going to delve into short stories and drama. That is literature in English, short stories and drama. And of course, we need a teacher who has that passion in her, who believes that drama is life. Let's have a quick profile look at our teacher. have the beautiful Buonasima with us here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, um, your motto is that drama is life. And I just need to share this fun fact that Korean drama is also life. Is that correct? It is. <laughs> so we have our beloved teacher who loves her Korean dramas as well. But that's not the topic for today. Before we go straight into literature for short story and drama, let us actually come over here. Let's complete some SOPs uh, before we begin. Let's, let's go. All right, so because we are maintaining social distancing, mm -hmm. you can actually remove your mask and okay. place it into the container that we have. Okay, let me, hey. how do I, oh, right, right. Yes. All right, Close and please them. use the hand sanitizer. Sizer, right. Yep. Okay. I'm going to sanitize my hands as well. And also a quick reminder before I forget, for those of you who are staying safe and well at home or anywhere you are watching this from, do remember your SOPs when you're out and about, starting off with always sanitizing or washing your hands, also wearing your mask when you're out in public, and most importantly, maintaining social distancing. Now, um, Juan, I have a very important question about our topic today. Previously, I actually asked what were the biggest misconceptions about literature. But because you are such a drama lover, uh -oh. tell me, <laughs> what do you love most about teaching on this topic in particular? Literature, and let's focus a little bit more on the drama and short stories part. Um, when we look at drama, when we look at short stories, I'm always telling uh, the kids, how is it different from real life? When we're studying the dramas, when we're studying the short stories, novels even, poems even, you're not just reading for an exam. These texts always show to you what real life is like. So when I say drama is life, I'm always <laughs> telling the kids, leave the drama in the textbooks. Now you do your drama with me. <laughs> Fantastic. That is really, really good. Um, the drama that she mentions, obviously, it's ne not any of those negative drama. This is beautiful drama, and she re resonates it with what you are studying. Now, let us have a listen to what the students have to say instead. Didi TV, KPM. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Amira Sofia Pitiyo Zahar. I'm studying at the SMK Asunta and I am a 2020 SPM candidate. What I like about the subject literature in English is that I find it very interesting to analyze people's minds and thoughts through stories. They really open my mind about how different we are and how vulnerable our emotions can be. What's challenging about this subject is that the process of understanding the characters might be hard for some people as we can't really relate to them well. So we do have to work very hard to appreciate the works of literature and to manage our time wisely because we have to write a lot in our exams in a short time. Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Siti Narizwani. I'm from SMK Asunta and I'm taking the subject Literature in English for SPM 2020. Literature in English refers to the study of texts from around the world written in English and, and it has various type of um, texts such as uh, short stories, novels, poetry and many other forms. I find this subject really interesting because students can um, develop their skills of interpretation through extensive reading and writing. 
the best part about this subject is that it allows students to be more creative to answer the questions based on the text that we have studied and it also helps expanding our vocabulary and also our writing skills. Something that I find kind of hard and distressing about the subject is that some of the texts that we learned can be quite difficult and complicated for us to understand. That's all from me. Assalamualaikum. Didik TV KPM I love those insights from our students. Now, Puan Azima, tell me, because when I think of um, drama, I actually think of William Shakespeare. What are your thoughts on that? Well, um, if you look at William Shakespeare, the great bard himself, yes. <laughs> we all love the works of William Shakespeare, but today we're going to look at a different drama. Okay, no mm. problem. But because William Shakespeare is so, um, it's so connected with drama, we're actually just going to show a short clip for the students to enjoy before we go on our break. Didik TV KPM. Didik TV KPM. Welcome back students, parents, everyone who is watching. Now today's topic is on literature in English and we focus on short stories and of course drama as I've mentioned just now. Now we also have students who will be joining us via an online call. Let us welcome our students right now. Hello students, how are you? Can you hear me just fine? Great, all right. Now, I want you to introduce yourself, starting off with Durga all the way at the top. If you could just unmute yourself and uh, give us a, a quick intro about yourself. Hello, good evening. My name is Durga Shini. Good evening, Durga. Okay, nice, sweet and short introduction. We'll move on to our next student. Uh, how about Isabel? Good evening, my name is Isabel. Uh, good evening, Isabel. And next, Noel. Hello, my name is Noel, and I'm from SMK Arkansas. Proudly as well. Okay, how about Kadira? Hello, my name is Kadira from SMK Arkansas. Okay, and uh, how about Amaris? Good evening, my name is Amaris, and I'm from SMK Arkansas. Okay, Amaris. Okay, and last but not least, Camelia. Hi, my name is Kim and I, and I'm also from SMK Asunta. So everyone is from SMK Asunta. Are you all friends? Oh, that's, yes, a, co yes, that's yes. a coincidence. That's a good coincidence. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I hope you guys will have, well, you ladies will have fun today. And I hope that it will be really insightful. I'm sure it most definitely will be. Now, right. to all of you who are watching, I'm going to uh, give the floor back to our teacher, Ponasima, who will begin her class right now. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. And uh, hi, ladies. Give me a wave. All right. Very good. Energetic and ready. Okay. I think um, they're so happy to see you. <laughs> I hope so. Um, it's, I think, two days before the paper. A lot of hard work has been put in. Um, I'd just like to take maybe 10 seconds to say thank you to the production crew for putting up that video on William Shakespeare. Um, as you asked earlier, why is Shakespeare so significant where dramas is concerned? His works are part of the public domain, so easily accessible. Um, and because of that, we love drama so much. And I think that's why for today, instead of William Shakespeare, I'm going to go through a different drama. All right? A different drama. And so candidates will know that there are three drama texts available. The Merchant of Venice, as mentioned by William Shakespeare, Flowers for Algernon and Hope Springs. But we're going to look at specifically the play of Daniel Key's Flowers for Algernon, which has been adapted into a radio drama by Bert Cools. This is, for your information, Amanda, a radio drama. Wow. That's what makes it so interesting because when you go through the lines of the play, it's not your drama on stage. So when audio. I studied these with the girls, I asked them to focus on the lines of the dialogue and the interaction the characters had with one another. All right, ladies, ready to go? This is a quick plot summary of the drama. 
All right, our radio play, Flowers for Algernon. At the very beginning, we are introduced to Charlie Gordon, who's 37 years old and has an IQ of 68. He clearly yearns to be smart. I wonder if Kadira can tell me, why does he want to be smart so badly? Uh, the first thing, the reason why he wants to be smart is that hopefully that he's able to read, he wants to read. Right, he wants to be and, accepted, and second, right. And he believes when he is smart? And I, I think, and, and he believed that when he became smart, people mm -hmm. would accept him for who Yes. All right. Fantastic answer. And because of that, we find that, uh, sorry, Charlie Gordon agrees upon the persuasion of his teacher, Miss Kenyon, to take part in an experiment he believes will triple his intelligence. He agrees to be operated upon by these two doctors, and their names are Dr. Nima and Dr. Strauss. Before that, we find that he meets with Algernon the White Mouse, and he feels intimidated. First time he encounters the white mouse, he feels challenged. Noel, can you remember why he felt like that? Um, I think it's because all his life before the surgery, he's always said, oh, if only I wasn't dumb. So now when he's faced with a mouse that has an intelligence, you know, higher than his, I think that's why he feels challenged and is wanting to better himself. Fantastic answer. Thank you, my dear. All right. So now we move on to the rest of the drama. We find that the operation or surgery is successful. All right. We find that Charlie Gordon's intelligence has not just tripled. It seems like he has become super smart or super intelligent. You find that he has developed photographic memory. You find that he shows great comprehension of ancient languages and is even able to understand complex mathematical formulas. But not everything is a happy ending in this tale. You find that soon enough, Charlie Gordon realizes more and more about his surroundings. He's becoming more aware that his colleagues actually regarded him as a source of entertainment, only wanted to make fun of him. All right? And then later on, you find the effects of the experiment are merely temporary. You find that his condition actually becomes worse than before he even had the operation. All right? You find towards the end of the play, even the white mouse Algernon dies. And so our protagonist, Charlie Gordon, is left with a fear, will this same fate fall upon me? All right? So those very same ideas I have there for you in a plot graph, so to speak, where you have at the beginning of the drama, the original Charlie. What was he like at the very beginning of the play? Childlike, innocent, naive. And then you have his progress towards superhuman intelligence when his intelligence tripled after the surgery. And then towards the end, you find how he loses all his newly acquired abilities. When he regresses, he starts losing his memory. He can't remember where he lives. His speech uh, stutters again. And so one of the most important questions is, hmm, will this tale end on a tragic note? All right, moving on. These are some important quotes that I'm sure you ladies will remember we've discussed in class. All right, at the beginning of the play, before the operation, you find that Charlie says, because all my life I wanted not to be stupid. He realizes that in order to be accepted, to have more friends, he should do this operation. He says, I'll be able to read better. I'll be able to spell the words good. I'll be able to know lots of things and be like other people. But what I want someone to give me an answer for probably Isabel. You look at that quote there that I've taken from scene 25, where Charlie Gordon says, they laughed at me before and they despised me for my ignorance. Yet now they hate me for my knowledge. 
what in God's name do they want of me? Such an important, such a significant quote. I wonder, Isabel, can you remember what the scene 25 was about? Scene 25 was about Charlie receiving a petition to be fired from his job at the factory he worked mm. at. Very good, very good. And so he realized becoming smarter Didn't did help. not make his life no. dreams come true. All right, moving on. You have these other supporting characters, also important in the life of Charlie Gordon. We know that Charlie Gordon used to go to read uh, with Miss Kenyon. She's a teacher that helps uh, slow learners, adult learners. She's a patient teacher who shows optimism and kindness towards Charlie. And it is because of her encouragement, he agrees to the surgery. And in his own words, he feels she is lovely. Then you have Dr. Nima and you have Dr. Strauss, the two doctors who ultimately change Charlie Gordon's life. Dr. Nima is 60, Dr. Strauss is 50, both quite late in their careers in the sense that they're quickly running out of time to obtain glory. If they're going to make a name for themselves, this experiment is going to be their last ditch effort. Okay? So these are some points to ponder when we read about Charlie Gordon's journey. Right? You have these questions you undoubtedly ask yourselves. Who ultimately is the better friend? Would it be the colleagues at the factory, Frank or Joe? Or would it be the mouse, Algernon? Right? Then you have the question of ethics. Was it right? Was it ethical for the two doctors to take Charlie Gordon's life into their own hands? Right? And then another question. Should Charlie have agreed to the surgery? Durga, what do you think? I think he should because he wanted to read and write all his life. He wanted to be like other people. So Correct. even though he knows it's temporary, he should have just done that to feel how is it like to be like other people. Excellent point. Before the surgery itself, there was the question raised. Would you agree to the surgery knowing that the effects would be temporary? So he knew. Interesting. At the back of his mind, he knew this could happen to him. It may not last. And still, he agreed. All right? And I guess my favorite question, who do you feel sorry for, Amanda? When you look <laughs> through these ideas with me, do you feel sorry for the mouse, Algernon, or Charlie Gordon, the protagonist? Definitely Charlie, though. Definitely Charlie. Yes. How about Noel? Who do you feel sorry for? Charlie. Definitely Charlie. Okay. So these are... Teacher, may I ask you a question? Of course. Go ahead. Uh, just now you say that why Charlie have to undergo the surgery, why we have to agree that Charlie has to undergo the surgery. And in my opinion, mm -hmm. I guess that if, our, if the society setting, society setting in this drama were people who are giving courage and kind words, I think Charlie don't have to go undergo the surgery because they accept Charlie for who he is. Correct. Excellent. Excellent answer. And I'm, I'm so glad you raised it uh, because it actually brings us to this idea. When you look at some of the themes found in the drama, all right, you will find that uh, one of the most important ideas that Kadira mentioned was the idea here, which is tolerance and understanding in society. If we all wake up in the morning and decide in our heads, in our hearts, that we should be kind to others, then no individual like Charlie Goddard would have gone through such hardship. Thank you for that, Kadira. All right, now let me just quickly go back to symbolism before I forget because we've got two ideas here that I'd like for you to remember. When you look at the white mouse Algernon, always remember he does not just repre represent a test subject. He's also like a friend or a source of comfort to Charlie Gordon. 
And the idea of flowers, so symbolic there. Why is the title of the drama Flowers for Algernon in the first place? <laughs> yeah, why flowers? Why not breadcrumbs, right? <laughs> why not breadcrumbs for our mouths? What actually uh, is the idea here? What actually is the idea here? When he says right at the end of the drama, please, if you get a chance to put flowers on Algernon's grave in the backyard, you can see here that he's beginning to stutter. His speech patterns have already regressed. He's already beginning to lose his memory. And he is already very afraid that he is going to suffer the same fate as the white mouth. Yet he's still thinking, ah, if flowers are put there for Charlie, Friend. Yeah. they'll remember Algernon as well as me because he feels that the two of them actually have such a deep connection with one another. All right? So then if you look at these themes one more time, these are some of the most important themes in the radio drama Flowers for Algernon by Bert Kultz. You've got the dangers of man playing God. Should we take the life of a fellow human being into our own hands, make decisions that affect him? Question mark. Friendship and support. Why were these colleagues Frank and Joe at the factory not by his side? All right, it goes well with the other theme, tolerance and understanding. If they really considered him a friend, they would not have made fun of him. And the running joke there at the workplace was to do a Charlie Gordon. What did it mean to do a Charlie Gordon? To fall down, to be silly, to do uh, something ridiculously slow. And that actually means you are looking down on that person. All right? So the last idea there or theme there is loneliness and alienation. As some of you already said, if he knew he would be accepted the way he is. He would not have that longing or that yearning to pursue that operation with Dr. Nima and Dr. Strauss. Even though he was given that warning, it may not last forever. All right, ladies? All right. No questions? Very happy? Any questions at all? Do you have a question, Kadira? You said this, is that just a high five? Okay, so no, no questions at all, fantastic. Thank you so much, Buan. Now, before we actually move on to our short stories, we're going to be taking a quick break. So for those of you watching, don't go anywhere. We will be right back. DD TV, KPM. DD TV, KPM. Welcome back to all of you watching. I hope you had a quick break. Buana Sima, when you're ready, we'll get straight into our short stories. All right, let's go. Uh, ladies, ready? Thumbs up? I'm sure uh, what's on screen looks familiar because you know there are six short stories in uh, your anthology or collection, but we are going to look at specifically two short stories here, Samba Without Anchovies and Turning. 30, all right? So without further ado, we're going to look at Sambal Without Anchovies uh, by Chua Koi. There is an enticing uh, plate of sambal there. Maybe it will make our Miss Amanda a little bit hungry. I'm already Just hungry. a little bit, okay? <laughs> we're going to just jump right into it. We're going to look at the plot summary. And these are the main characters in this short story. You've got Hanif. And then you've got uh, his father, Pak Samad. You've also got Nora, his wife. Okay? So Hanif is an individual who regards himself as the anointed successor of the family business. He feels that it's his right to take over. And he is keen to implement several changes at Nasit Lemak Pak Samad. And it says there, these are the plans he wishes to implement. An interior upgrade, no banana leaves, and separate the anchovies from the sambal. So I'm going to ask Camelia, if she can remember, to describe what it was about the interior upgrade that Hanif wanted to change. OK, 
Amelia. No. Yes, hello. Yeah. I think she wanted to change the chairs up, and if I'm not mistaken, to also make the walls look nicer. Okay, very good. Right. Generally, he wants the decor of the stall to be upgraded and look very inviting to customers. Okay. Then you've also got the banana leaves there. Uh, Amaris, can you remember? What was this about? No banana leaves. Hanif suggested the idea to Pak Samad to not use banana leaves to line the plates because he said that it would help them save money and increase the profit of the business. Correct. It was a very thorny issue, wasn't it, between father and son. One didn't care about making the profit and the other wanted to increase daily profits. Okay, then we've got that last idea to separate the anchovies from the samba. Maybe Amaris, you can help me out. What was this about to separate the anchovies from the samba? Um, Hanif also suggested that they cook the samba and the anchovies separately and add them together only when they serve the customers. Because again, he said that this would help them to save money and all the other shops do it anyway. All right, very good. So, you have there a, see, uh, a son who wishes for the nasi lemak stall to right. make a profit. And his idea of making a profit is let's not cook the anchovies together in the sambal because when it is soggy, you can't serve it anymore. All right? Let, let's do that, he says. But you have Pak Samad who disagrees. And because he disagrees to the son's suggestions, you find the father-son relationship becoming strained. It's a bit of a cold war happening between Hanif and Pak Samad. I guess in my own opinion, I feel that the saviour later coming in the story would be Hanif's wife, Nora, because she is able to stand between the two men. She's able to observe their traits and qualities. She's also able to gently make her husband realise the true significance of the nasi lemak stall, the true meaning of the banana leaves to Hanif's father, Pak Samad. Yeah, uh, like I always say in class, it takes a woman. <clears throat> <laughs> so, we're looking at Hanif. What kind of an individual is he? A seasoned businessman, very much experienced, successfully uh, already making a name for himself. And he is frustrated towards his father's behaviour because, as he says, the stall is as it was since years ago, still a small roadside business. And then you find on the other end of the spectrum, Pa Samad, an old man who is well liked by his customers and friends, emotionally attached to the nasi lemak stall and everything that it represents, as the memories of his late wife are in the stall. Ah, so now you realize that is the truth behind his father's actions. All right? So when you look here, this is one important quote, probably the one that I like the most from the short story, where Nora actually says to the husband, you know what, the two of you are so alike. You're both stubborn and you're both short-tempered and the both of you are so romantic. <laughs> All right? okay. And it was such a beautiful approach because it helped Hanif to understand how he was like his father in so many ways. All right. He kept a box of mementos from all those earlier days courting his girlfriend then, Nora. <laughs> and his father, Pak Samad, has all these years retained the stall exactly as how it was before. Because that's where his memories are. Precious memories of him and his late wife. So, when Hanif suggested all those plans, in actual fact, his hope, was to have his father say to him, you've done a good job. Yes. His hope was for his mom to be supporting him from heaven, yes. feeling proud of the son's achievements. That's what Hanif is like. Yes. And Pak Samad, also a true romantic at heart, when Nora observes her father-in-law 
with a beam on his face, just slicing the banana leaves with all the love and care. She suddenly realizes, oh no, it is not just a stall. It means so much more. And that is the lesson she had to try and get her husband to understand. So symbolism plays such an important role in this short story. Yeah, The stall is not just a stall or not just a building, not just a place. It is here that Pak Samad can keep happy memories of his late wife. It is a business that they started together when their children were still small. Yeah, The banana leaves are not just banana leaves. <laughs> Yeah, the banana leaves are a symbol of love between Pak Samad and his late wife. And as I asked earlier, are you feeling a little hungry, Amanda? <laughs> the definitely. sambal there, cooked with or without anchovies. To, to cook it with or without anchovies shows you the difference between the past and the present. The past would be retaining the flavour. The past would be maintaining the recipe. The past would be keeping the tradition. But the modern... The present, what would it be? Pursuing profit, bringing the stall into the 21st century, making sure that we can make our money and not lose our cost. Trying right? to thrive basically correct, on the sun's point correct. of view. Yeah. So these are some of the questions and themes that we can find in the short story, Sambal Without Anchovies. You're looking at relationships. Hanif and Pak Samad, Hanif and his wife, Nora. You're looking at the generation gap between father and son. How beautifully it is portrayed in this short story. How they're both romantic in their own way. Right? You're looking at how the two men cope with loss. Actually, he missed his wife so greatly. And in actual fact, Hanif also misses his mom. But they could not express that. And it seemed as though the father and son were at loggerheads with one another. And then you find, wow. Yeah? You're actually so it similar. It actually meant yeah. that they loved the idea of that nasi lemak stall. It was such an important part of their lives, of their hearts. All right? Quick question. Um, let's ask Isabel. I'm going to ask just one question there. What do you think of Nora? I what? think Nora is a very sensible and patient woman. Ah. Do you agree with how she managed to persuade Hanif? Yes, I agree with how <laughs> she managed to persuade Hanif. Correct, correct. So, it is true that when you look at how Nora convinced her husband the banana leaves are the love letters between his parents. You realize that love does exist in everyday things. Right? Uh, when you read through the story, when you're revising before your paper on Thursday, undoubtedly you will find textual evidence that describes the stall. How the roof looks like it's about to crumble, <laughs> how the pots and pans are the very same ones that his late mother used. But therein lies the love. The Therein well. lies the memories, yeah. right? And there you have it, sambal without anchovies. anchovies. <laughs> All right. Now, as we move on to your next story, turning 30, I do believe we've got about nine minutes oh, left. Oh, OK. So All right, let's go. Let's go. Ready, ladies? Ready? Yes, okay. we are. <laughs> the idea of turning 30 should sound like a grand celebration. A birthday party is coming up. And it's such a milestone, right? A milestone to achieve. However, you find in the plot summary, something else happens. The story begins when Rosa, a Filipino maid who works for Leon and Beverly, is suspected of theft. And Rosa is then given an ultimatum. Either she returns the stolen video camera or Beverly will report her. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll get someone... Kadira, just quickly answer for me, why did Rosa take the video camera? Rosa steal the camera for... Um, sold it and get money to send it to Philippines because the salary that she get, her husband use it for drugs. So without paying the house rent at Philippines, 
they're going to stay homeless. Very good. Wow. All right. So, in actual fact, Rosa, the Filipino maid who works for Leon and Beverly, when she took the video camera belonging to her employers, she was driven by desperation. Yep. It was a desperate act on her part, not because she has criminal intent or she is a, an evil person, a bad person by nature. She wanted to help her family back in the Philippines. So Leon's mother, also known as the Old One, she pawns a jade bracelet because she is willing to help Rosa, the maid. We discover as we read through the story, she feels a certain similarity, a familiarity even, with the life of Rosa because she struggled too when she was young. So she feels, I will help Rosa if no one can, if no one else will, all right? So Leon's mother then, she gets to the pawn shop, all right? She redeems the video camera. She leaves the jade bracelet there. She's successful up to that point. She gets back to the house. The party is in full swing, by the way. The guests have all arrived. Beverly is playing hostess, oh, ever so beautifully. And then Leon discovers that his mother is stumbling to put the video camera back in place. So what does he do? Noel, tell me, what does Leon say to his mother? Um, he confronts his mother and he brings about the topic of justice, not mm -hmm. equality. He says, if you're looking at justice, then she should be punished, right? She did something wrong, so Amma, why are you helping her? So she, he is asking his mother, why are you being an accomplice, right? But our wise old one here, she reminds her son, look at your name. It says Ahliong, and Ahliong means to have compassion. In Cantonese, it literally means to have a kind heart. So can't you find it in your heart now to show your maid some compassion? All right? So you have that right at the end of the short story. Leon quickly putting the camera back and then shielding the truth from Beverly and thus rescuing Rosa. And all's well that ends well taken from William Shakespeare, right? <laughs> So, you've got Leon, also known as Ah Leong, who is a filial son, a sensible and practical person with a strong sense of justice, a lawyer by profession, a man with a strong sense of the law, but also capable of having a good heart, right? Then you have the old one, all right, Leon's mother, who stays with them. She is a wise one because she has gone through so many hardships in life. She's so obliging and accommodating, all right? Whenever she can, she just wants to reduce the tension in the house. And she is spiritual or religious because she pray prays to the goddess Kuan Yin, Pusa, whenever she seeks comfort, all right? Whenever she seeks warmth. Then you have Beverly. Ah, Beverly, the employer who threatened Rosa about the video camera. You find that her character is one that is driven by financial success. Look at what she says. A four-bedroom condo, a good job, a new car. For her, it is important to prove to society that her husband has made it. And that's why she says, well, you know what, like it or not, there's going to be a party. The caterers are coming. And so we're going to celebrate your birthday. Right? We see that she can be insensitive, suspicious, and judgmental towards others. Right? You look at the jade bracelet and how symbolism is strong in this short story. How it does not just mean an accessory, it means financial security, social status. You look at the birthday party itself. It's not just a celebration of Ah Leong's birthday, but Mm, Show off well. So many hidden meanings behind it. Yep. And then you have the three statuettes, right? Kuan Yin Pusa, Holy Mother Mary, and Lady Justice. And these are so significant in the lives of the old one, Rosa, as well as Leon or Ah Leong, because of their strong belief, strong faith, 
and that's what helps them, makes them feel comforted. Okay? So these are some of the questions there. Would you agree with Beverly's actions as an employer? I'm sure you would agree with me when you say no. She should have been more Passion. passionate, compassionate, kind, understanding. Right? Is the definition of success the same for everyone? Certainly not. Because you can see there, Beverly and Leon, they don't look at the birthday party the same way. So there you have values and themes coming from the short story. Always be kind to others. Always show respect to family elders. Stay modest and humble and be compassionate. When you read through this short story, the story of filial piety, family relationships and compassion come shining through. All right, ladies, any questions? Who is your favorite character from this short story? Uh, Amaris. Um, my favorite character is the old one. Is the old because, one? Yes, because she's compassionate and she's able to empathize with Rosa, what she's going through, and she took the time to understand and help Rosa. Fantastic. Wonderful answer. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wants to share their favorite character for this story? Don't be shy. It, this is actually, now is the time. All right, I, how about I pick someone? Kadira has had her smiles from ear to ear, and I think she's ready to give us an answer on her favorite character. Kadira, what do you think? I think it's Rosa, because somehow she has the high res responsibility. Responsibility. That's why she, yeah, that's why she's working. And then she know that what she did is the wrong thing. That's why she tell to herself that she's going to get back the camera after she able to take it back. Correct. That's cool. So you find that she is actually a, a nice person, a kind soul, just driven by difficult circumstances. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you. Thank well, you for nobody that. Nobody selected Leon. I, th I think he's my favorite oh, character, is, actually. Is he? Okay. Yeah, because you can actually see the character development from him thinking that, oh no, justice must be served. Justice must being, be served. Later on, being able to be swayed and right. you know, helping Rosa in the end. I actually like um, that character development. That's my <laughs> take. Well, do we, are you sure you don't have any questions at all, students? Okay, we have no more questions and we are right on time. Thank you so much, Juan, for being with thank us today. Thank you for having today. me. Um, thank you for all your insights onto it and I loved how detailed they were as well. Now to all of you who are watching Safe at Home, thank you so much for joining us from the start all the way to the finish. We will be back very shortly. Until we meet again, this is the end of the session right now. My name is Amanda Andrea, your host for today. Take care and goodbye. TV KPM Assalamualaikum Saya Azni Dasanwa binti Raja Azmi Ibu kepada Amira Sofia binti Muhammad Saha Yang menduduki SPM pada tahun ini Dan saya berharap kejayaan untuk anak saya Iaitu mendapat keputusan yang cemerlang Bagi membolehkan dia menyambung pelajaran dalam bidang yang diminatinya jadi itulah harapan saya, semoga dia dapat keputusan yang baik untuk uh, menyambung pelajaran ke peringkat yang lebih tinggi ke universiti pilihannya. Assalamualaikum, saya Lubisa Natasha Azman, ibu kepada Camilla Nur Tasha yang sedang menduduki peperiksaan SPM pada tahun ini. Harapan saya sebagai ibunya adalah untuk dia mencapai keputusan yang cemerlang so that it will enable her to pursue whatever it is that she would like di Institut Pengajian Tinggi. Sebagai ibu, doa saya saja yang dapat mengiringinya, insyaAllah.